passed unanimously. Item 8L is, a council, is an item that's been before council, been discussed for quite some time, and we have uh, several options for the council to consider. Mayor, could I frame the issue, if, if you don't mind? Um, back in, in August, probably, of, of, of uh, 2009, as we were putting together the MAPS 3 program, uh, we had the eight programs pretty well outlined, and we were going toward a little over $700 million program, seven years and, and, and such. And as we were finalizing the program, some things came to attention. One of the things that we talked about at that point in time was that the, one of the more thought to be preferred uh, sites for the convention center would have been on the site where the old Ginny substation was. And to, to, to move that substation and move the lines associated with it was thought to be about $30 million at that time. And so we added $30 million for that. At the same time, Councilman White, Councilman Bowman, Asked that we take a look at, at, at some potential money for a hub station and, and uh, uh, to also take a look at, at, at some matching funds for potential commuter rail at that time or some light rail. And so $10 million was added into the, the budget for the modern streetcar. At the same time, we got the report back from Hargraves, who's doing the, the consultant on, on the park, and we had $120 million in the park, and we thought 130 would probably be a safer number, so we increased the park's number from $120 million Two hundred and thirty million. We can only do sales tax in three month periods. And so we rounded up at that point in time to seven years, nine months, and that gave us the seventeen million dollar contingency that was in there. There wasn't a seventeen million dollar contingency at, at, at that point. So we that was the package that was put together and put out to the voters. It was voted on in December of that year and, and, and passed. Some of the campaign materials did say two hundred and eighty million dollars for the convention center. They, they combined that. When we started the process out after that, we've had several presentations at councils, and we've broken that $30 million out or asterisked it as a subcategory under the convention center of that $30 million for infrastructure. In some places, I think, we, I think primarily we showed as a $280 million total budget with an asterisk that shows us $30 million for infrastructure. This kind of been a, a side note. And that's been in presentations of council that, that Mike Mize has made here several times. It was shown that way uh, when we had the, the workshop with the MAPS 3 board uh, back in April or whenever that was, May, whenever that was. It was shown that way when we, we brought it forth when we worked on the calendar a few months. And so it's been pretty consistently shown that way as 280 but $30 million out there. And then we cited the substation or the convention center. And of course, that is not the desired location or the recommended location to be where the substation is. Some people believe it would still be beneficial to move it. It'd benefit the park. There's some discussion about that whole issue. Um, I thought our critical issue with MAPS 3 was going to be the timing. And so we had a schedule that we discussed and went through the MAPS process. And that came to council and was voted on in July and it was a split vote. And we decided whether we were moving what projects up or not and moving that. We had a big discussion at that point in time. After that, I thought we'd bring back an implementation schedule that would simply memorialize that time schedule. I was wrong. Because as we went through the process and brought that implementation uh, schedule plan back to the MAPS 3 process, the Convention Center subcommittee, chaired by Tom McDaniels, who's with us here today, said, you know, as we're going forward, we really need to, to memorialize and get that, that $30 million into our total budget and make it 280. And through, through the subcommittee, and I know some of the councilmen were there that day, they moved and, 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 and to, to let's modify the budget and, and, and put that, put that in, as a one number in there of $280 million. Now, with the, the plan that Mike Myers had put together, or, or ADG, uh, at the time, the staff been working with, we've just kind of always shown that as an asterisk. As a, as, as a, it's clearly an asterisk, and it says uh, uh, infrastructure, $30 million on the side. Um, we went to the MAPS 3 full committee. And the same thing, and, and, and not only is Tom McDaniels here, who's not only chairman of the subcommittee, chairman of the mastery committee, and I see Mike Adams is here today, uh, who's also on the, on the subcommittee, and, and they came forth and, and, and said, yes, let's put that, that, that 30 in with the convention center to make it a $280 million project. And so we brought that recommendation forth, and we brought back forth the recommendation uh, that was originally put out, where we keep it in that subcategory of $30 million for infrastructure. And then I, I've talked enough council to know that there was not consensus on this item. And so 
we put on a compromise item that would put uh, 15 into the park and 15 into the subconvention just for a compromise type situation. Now let's go back to OG&E for, for a second. Because if it is chosen, if that's our desire not to move that substation, some have talked, can we screen it? And yes, we can, and we've talked to OG&E, and we believe that to putting up a, a screen, and that hasn't been totally defined, but a example of that could be a, a concrete wall that, that looks like stacked stone, similar to what's on the bridge that we talked about this morning where the canal comes under the I-40. I think most of you have seen that, where you can stain the brick a different color. It, it's not a bad-looking uh, uh, appearance. We think for three, four hundred thousand dollars, somewhere along that lines, we can probably have a pretty nice screen that would cover most of the of the substation. Now there are some electrical lines that go through the park and adjacent to the park. There's a line that goes east and west down Fourth or Fifth Street, Eric, Fourth Street. That goes across there, and then there's a line, and these are major transmission lines that goes on the east side of Robinson, not in the park, but on the east side of Robinson until you get to the very south end and then it kind of kitty corners across the park. And if we were to take care of those lines, because the other lines, the, the, this, the, the, the minor lines in, in, in the park, those will all go away. But these are, are big transmission lines. If we were to move those, the total cost of getting rid of that major line going east and west and the line not in the park along Robinson that cuts across, uh, the total cost of that we think is right around $5 million. But I don't believe that's all a MAPS 3 cost. And I don't, we haven't negotiated that, but I think under the franchise agreement, part of that cost should be borne by OG&E. And we don't have that all worked out, and that would, that would be a, a negotiation through OG&E. But the total cost, we believe, is slightly over $5 million. If you want to screen the substation, take, take out that east-west line, and take a, a, out that Robinson line. And that's a point of discussion, because is that necessary to take out that line? It's not in the park, it's across the street from the park, and again, that's a policy issue to, to, to come forward. So with that background, that's why we're here today. After I thought we had it all worked out, we're just gonna memorialize the, the implementation, or the uh, schedule that we had you know, from, from two months ago or, or six weeks ago, we're back to decide what to do with this $30 million. And I know I've talked to, I think, all the council, or most of the council about this. I know there's not a consensus necessarily on this issue. And I'm here to tell you that we're looking for direction today. And I think any decision you make would be a good decision to help us move forward. To, and, and I think we can get by. It's, it's, it's a question of the size of the, uh, of the convention center. Is it, does it need to be 250 or 280? Right? You know, you're talking about some square footage that's going to, you know, the larger it is, you'll be able to host maybe an extra convention or two because of having a larger. You know, 250 was the original number that was that was thought to be needed at the start of the process. And so with that, we have Mike Myers here with ADG, and he's going to go through a presentation on the implementation schedule. And Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Mr. Couch, um, thanks for being here. Um, I'm glad you recognize that Mr. McDaniel and Mr. Uh, Adams are here as well. The presentation that we're going to make today um, is really the culmination of about eight months' worth of work and the input from an awful lot of people, from the Citizens Advisory Committee to the subcommittees to many citizens who have attended these meetings, um, a number of different <clears throat> consultants that have engaged both by ADG and by the city to help in this process. Um, some of the information that I'm going to show you uh, up front, you've seen before. Um, we're doing this as part of a review, but um, it's a review of the entire and a summary of the entire plan, which you've received as part of your packet uh, for the meeting today. Um, once again, the plan includes not just the implementation, the, or the program order, which you have previously approved. It includes uh, conceptual scopes of work, and it includes budgets. Um, and this has been presented to the Citizens uh, Advisory Committee as well. Um, there have been some edits since the, the last Citizens Advisory uh, uh, Board meeting, but these are edits which were recommended either by subcommittees or by the Citizens Advisory Board itself. Um, this is a very brief summary of what those edits uh, include. It's been reformatted. We've tried to make it a little bit easier to read with larger fonts. 
We've removed proper names from some of the facilities, such as the ballpark and the convention center, since those have changed in the past, and, and we want this to be um, a document that can stand for a long time. We've added paddling to the Oklahoma River to uh, demonstrate the fact that that is more than a rowing venue. Um, we've added, and at the request of both the uh, uh, Convention Center Subcommittee and the Advisory Board, uh, we've added some language from the CSNL uh, Executive Summary that was prepared for uh, the uh, Greater Oklahoma City Chamber uh, with respect to the uh, actual Convention Center piece. The implementation plan includes the program, the project timeline, which has, uh, as I said before, been approved by City Council previously. Um, once again, on the budgets, the budgets include uh, consulting, architectural and engineering fees, um, environmental investigations, geotechnical and construction testing, uh, land acquisition where appropriate. Each project has its own project contingency in addition to the $17 million overall program contingency, which Mr. Couch referred to earlier. Um, once we allocated those costs, the balance became the cost available for construction. Um, and once again, the construction uh, budgets, which uh, had, had previously been uh, published and, and made known, we have de deemed as midpoint budgets. So those budgets, if it was, if it was uh, $130 million, um, it is $130 million as of January 1st, 2016. If work occurs, any kind of work occurs on that project prior to January 1st of 2016, those budget amounts are diminished by 3% per year to reflect the cost of inflation. If it's after January 1st of 2016, they're increased by 3% to, to, to uh, allow for the cost of inflation. The reason for doing this was to allow, try to allow parity for projects that came early in the project and projects that come later in the project so that they have the same relative amount of budget available to them for construction. The next set of slides is um, project specific and we're going to start um, in the same order that we've gone from the very beginning uh, of any presentation that we've made. The Convention Center is the first budget. As Mr. Couch pointed out, there are three versions of the Convention Center uh, budget. Uh, version A um, is effectively a $280 million uh, uh, midpoint budget. Uh, it includes the $30 million for a total of $280 million. It sh the construction for, um, actually design for, um, uh, the convention center would start sometime in 2012 uh, and, and construct, actually it starts in 2014. Construction would actually start in 2016. Version B is a $250 million con, uh, convention center budget with the $30 million being added to as, as an infrastructure contingency, and you'll see that slide at the end of the presentation. Everything else would stay the same in terms of, of uh, the, uh, um, the timing of the project, but because this is a $250 million project, obviously the size of the facility would be reduced proportionately based on the uh, um, reduced available construction cost. Version C is um, the compromise version that Mr. Couch referred to. It has a $265 million convention center budget and $15 million then gets added to the parks budget, which would increase their budget from $130 million to $145 million. Once again, the size of the convention center would be between the uh, um, uh, uh, between both the A and the B uh, components. The, the overall size of, do this off the top of my head, the $280 million um, convention center budget would allow for approximately 530,000 overall square feet of convention center. The 200, uh, version C, the $265 million would allow for 500,000 and version 
B, the $250 million would allow for approximately 470,000 overall square feet. Um, because the, the park is impacted by version C, we've shown uh, uh, versions A and B together. This is the original $130 million park budget. Um, work on the, on the park would be divided into three construction, design and construction phases. A very early phase, which would have a minimal amount of uh, money, approximately $11 million, that would be dedicated to um, finding a way to land the pedestrian bridge on the south end of the upper park and to try and provide some landscaping on the far north end of the upper park. Um, that would take place fairly quickly. Um, the completion of the upper park would take place at, around the midpoint of the program and the completion of the lower park toward the very end of the 10-year program. Version C is the version that would add $15 million to the park budget. Timing would stay approximately the same. For purposes of this version, we've added that $15 million um, to the first design and construction phase, which would take place very early in the program, but that is something that that still could be uh, open for uh, discussion and consideration. Modern streetcar and transit has not changed uh, really from the last time we presented any kind of a budget to you or to the advisory committee. Um, that budget still is a $130 million midpoint budget. Um, construction on the the uh, streetcar um, is phased in a number of different ways and, and includes some procurement phases whereby we would go out and try to purchase rail and perhaps cars earlier in the program, partly because it can take, uh, rail is, is sometimes a one-year lead, uh, lead item. Uh, cars can be as much as two to two and a half years. So, Procurement of those of that equipment and those rails um, would happen uh, long before construction. We've been we've uh, just to let you know what some of the progress has been with respect to um, uh, our involvement uh, on on the streetcar and the subcommittee's involvement. We've had some significant meetings with uh, Rick Kane and Katpa and with Katpa's uh, consultant Jacobs. Um, we're concerned, we were concerned that our schedule tracks with the schedule that um, PACPA has with respect to trying to obtain uh, federal money. We, ha we are now um, uh, very convinced that the schedule that, uh, that we've provided in the program order, in the project timeline, which you approved, tracks very well with the schedule that PACPA is currently on. Uh, in trying to obtain federal financing. Um, we, have, uh, we have told the subcommittee that we're going to continue to monitor the progress that COTPA makes so that we can make sure that if we need to make adjustments to the schedule for MAPS 3, we can advise the advisory board and council of those uh, changes so that we can make sure that we take advantage of all the federal funding that may be available. Um, Oklahoma River. Uh, you, you're probably aware that, uh, that I mean, this budget hasn't changed. It's still a $60 million midpoint budget. Um, we are in the process right now of uh, we have a consultant on board who is uh, working to provide uh, working drawings for, a, uh, for the uh, river lighting for the um, last thousand yards of the race course. Um, that uh, the consultant is nearly completed with their work. Once they've completed that work, the, um, that project will go out to bid um, and we'll keep you advised about progress on that. We've also engaged, a uh, city's also engaged uh, a consultant to look at a feasibility study for windscreens for that same second thousand yard course um, and they are in the process of putting together their first um, presentation and recommendation to the city. Um, the, the river projects will be done 
in four phases, the lighting and the windscreens, the first phase, a number of other uh, projects, all of which are listed in your, uh, on, on your uh, implementation plan would be the second phase. The whitewater facility would be the third phase. And the balance of the project in phase four would utilize whatever funds would be available at the end of the project um, for the uh, uh, additional landscaping and other components of the uh, river uh, and river improvements. Fairgrounds. Uh, budget remains the same, $60 million midpoint budget. Work on the fairgrounds would be in two phases. First phase, which would happen fairly early in the project, would be um, parking and site improvements. That will, will happen fairly quickly. Um, we have not yet um, engaged a, a, a consultant, but that's something that will happen, I believe, before the end of the year. We'll, we'll solicit for um, the uh, for a consultant to, to provide work for the the uh, parking and site improvements. We've worked with with uh, Tim O'Toole and, and the parks uh, people. To, I mean, the, the fairground people to make sure that that happens in a way that works with um, uh, the events that that always take place at the fairgrounds. Mike, may I ask a quick question about that? The sure. fairgrounds has a very very detailed master plan, long-term master plan that a lot of this was built around. Do we need to add an additional consultant to your mind to, to review that work, or could we not um, kind of mirror what they've already We're designed? using, it, that's, a, that's a great question. We're using the fairgrounds master plan as, as kind of a guide. The consultant that we would use, that we would engage for the, the site improvements and for the parking would be to actually design construction drawings to go out to bid. Okay. Uh, next, the senior health and wellness centers. Um, once again, we're, we're uh, estimating that there can be four health and wellness centers. Um, we, uh, uh, there was a, a total of $50 million, which has, that budget has not changed. Um, for the health and wellness centers, there would, we think that there will be four. The city has engaged and is about to receive a final report from AIP and KMD with respect to um, components of the health and wellness centers that may be common to a number of them. Um, we still recognize that each of these health and wellness centers, depending on where it's located, depending on the community it's going to serve, may be different. But there will be some common elements, and part of the reason for the AIP and KMD study is to um, identify what those are. So the subcommittee is working on that. We also know that the um, partners, the operating partners for these projects are going to be um, very important, and there is, uh, all, there is actually a draft RFP for those partners, which has been submitted to the subcommittee and which we hope to finalize. Um, next month to allow us to go out and solicit for partners and at the same time we will be going out to solicit for architectural and engineering services for that first center which will uh, be constructed very early in the program. Uh, trails, there, um, the trails budget of 50 million uh, midpoint uh, budget has not changed. Um, we are, uh, we also, we have uh, an RFQ out right now for uh, a consultant to design the first phase of the trails. We expect that to happen very early in the program. Um, and the first phase would probably be a trail that would go from Overholzer to connect to the Oklahoma River Trail at its west end. Oops. Sidewalks, um, once again, that budget has not changed. Um, there is an RFQ out right now for uh, architectural and in actually engineering services to um, work on a, uh, and I'm going to use the phrase master plan to help determine what, uh, where the, uh, um, the initial sidewalks are going to go as part of the, the implementation plan we understand that there needs to be um, a lot of uh, involvement uh, on the part of 
the uh, Sidewalks and Trails Committee on the part of Council and other people to determine exactly where, there's a, where they're going to go, but that engineer will assist in that process um, along with ADG and, and the MAPS staff. But the idea is to get sidewalks under construction as soon as possible. Um, contingency, program contingency, <clears throat> excuse me, versions A and C show a $17 million contingency, which is the original contingency that Mr. Couch uh, spoke about earlier. Version B of the contingency has $30 million for an infrastructure contingency in addition to the $17 million uh, overall program uh, contingency. That's a lot of information to go over very quickly. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Mayor, I have a question about the, um, on the rail on page 11. I, the, um, the, the 10 million that was put into that budget for the hub, um, I don't, it, 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 there's the 10 million's in there, but I don't see a designation that leads me to, to the it hub. is a specific line item in here, and I know this is really hard to read, but I, what it's, it's, what is it, 9.25, because it's, it takes place early in the, in the, in the, uh, um, project, so it has been, um, uh, deflated, if you will, by 3% a year to reflect the fact that we, those dollars may be spent very early in the program. So there is a specific line item to reflect that. In, in the, in a more detailed budget than the one that you have here. Um, I, it's, it is on there, isn't it? What? I believe it is. Show it to me. Okay, it is, if you look at uh, the transit phase one, has okay. several right. subheaders. I found it. And so it, it is there. Thank you, sir. Okay, I just, could, I just didn't see where it was. There's, like I said, it's a lot of information. Right.